Hi, this is Andrea Shulman again. And yes, you are smart enough to understand quantum mechanics, even if you don't identify as someone who is traditionally book smart. Today's video is entitled Quantum Physics for Dummies, and I really hope that you enjoy it. But first, if you are excited to watch today's video, please give it a thumbs up. And also, please remember to subscribe and comment. Your engagement promotes my work and keeps me in business, and I truly do appreciate it. All right, let's go ahead and break down quantum mechanics in a very simple way. Now, the first thing to understand about quantum physics is that it's different than classical physics. Now, classical physics is really about how physical objects move. All right, so physical objects like this tennis ball, how do they move. Quantum physics, however, focuses on quantum particles. Now, what's a quantum particle? It's a very fancy name for something you probably learned of in school, which are the building blocks of matter. See, if you've heard of something called a proton, a neutron, an electron, a photon, those are examples of quantum particles, although there's many other kinds of fancy quantum particles as well. But for the sake of this video, all you really need to know is that a quantum particle is the building block of matter. Okay, so if you take physical matter and zoom in with a really high powered microscope, if you get inside deep enough, what you'll find is that physical matter is made up of atoms, which are in turn made up from quantum particles. And so while classical physics focuses on how matter moves, physical matter moves, quantum physics really focuses on these building blocks of matter, the inside of the atoms. How are those particles moving? Now, physical matter behaves in a relatively predictable way when we look at it through classical physics. If I let go of a ball, it'll drop to the floor. And so if you think of, in school, maybe you learned of Isaac Newton and that story of the apple falling on his head, that's really classical physics. And again, it's very predictable. So if I understand the size and the weight of this object, and I know that I'm throwing it at 10 miles an hour, and I know the approximate wind velocity, I can reasonably predict how long it's gonna take this ball to travel a given distance. And because we can see physical matter, we're very familiar with it behaving in a very predictable way. But while physical matter and classical physics behaves in a very predictable way, when we zoom on in and start looking at quantum particles, quantum particles do not behave in a very predictable way. And understanding the basics of quantum physics and how quantum particles move will give you a very strong appreciation for how your reality is constructed, how physical matter is constructed, and what you can do to change physical matter, change reality in your life if you want to see things behave differently. So how do quantum particles move? In a word, infinitely. See, in other words, if you drop a quantum particle, it doesn't just drop to the floor, it goes everywhere. See, it has been strongly suggested that quantum particles don't just exist in a particular location, but rather they also exist in something called superposition. Superposition basically means existing in many places at once. Superposition can also be described as being kind of like a wave or ripples. And so in essence, something like a photon could be seen or exist in a particular location, but it also simultaneously exists as a wave or as ripples throughout the universe. Now, if this sounds far-fetched, there is scientific justification to this claim. And if you'd like to learn about the scientific justification for the claim, I'd highly recommend looking into an experiment called the double slit experiment. The double slit experiment builds on an experiment created by Thomas Young in 1801, but since then it has evolved into a much more technical experiment. The long story short about the double slit experiment is that if you take a photon or an individual particle of light, a quantum particle of light, and shoot it off into space, 
if you don't directly look at it, if you don't directly observe it, it travels as a wave. You can pick up feedback of an individual photon across space. However, if you take a really fancy high-powered microscope and zoom in on the photon and watch it as it travels out into space, it will travel and appear to be one particular particle. But this is only the case if you are directly observing the photon, which fortunately today science allows us to do. But the trick is you have to be looking at the particle. If you look at a photon particle, it exists in one place. But if you collect data on that particle without observing it, it appears to exist in many places in a wave pattern all at one time. In other words, an individual photon only becomes an individual if an observer like you or me is looking at it. If there is no observer of the photon, the photon becomes infinite. And so you and I as observers, what do we do? We collapse the infinite into the physical. So what does quantum physics tell us about our physical reality? Well, matter, physical matter, is made up entirely of quantum particles. And if quantum particles exist in superposition, meaning the quantum particles exist everywhere at once, guess what that means about the tennis ball? It too exists everywhere at once. And this is why many scientists today believe that there isn't just one reality, but rather there are many realities. And some scientists go as far to say there are infinite realities. The ones that we experience are the ones that we have collapsed into place. So how can understanding quantum physics change your reality? Well, you are the observer. You are what collapses the infinite into the specific. How you choose to observe the world, what you focus on, what you look for, directly impacts the reality that you're living in. Your focus is what's collapsing the infinite into the specific. And therefore, learning how to change how you observe can completely change the world that you live in. And if this excites or intrigues you, I would recommend that you check out another video that I have created entitled, Two Ways to Quantum Leap Your Reality. And I will try to remember to put a link to that video in the description of this one so you can check it out next. Thanks so much for watching today's video on quantum physics for dummies. Again, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think about it below in the comments. And if you'd like to see even more clearly how your focus creates your reality, I would love to invite you to take my law of attraction test. And if you'd like to take that test now, again, go ahead and look below in the description for a link. Thanks for watching today's video and have a great day. Bye-bye.